Well, let's start at Plainmoor, where Torquay United were hoping to extend their recent good home run. The goals hadn't lost at Plainmoor since September the 8th, if only their away form had been as good. Struggling Swansea were the visitors yesterday, so all the indications were pointing towards another home win. But would it turn out that way? The commentary comes from Martin Dean. Well, former Manchester United trainee David Brown is the latest addition to Torquay United's evolving squad. He makes his debut after signing non-contract forms as manager Roy McFarland tries to cure his side's lack of punch up front. A point underlined by Torquay's harvest of just three goals in their last six games. Sadibi getting up well for the flick on towards Coates. Tyson trying to get the shot in, came off Woods. And now Stephen Evans. Oh, they got forward well, Evans. Reese climbing well for it. That's for Ockley to get it forward towards Marcus Richardson. He's got away from Matthew Brown. Brown making a little run. He's onside, David Brown. Good chance for him. Saved well by Freestone. Still not dead, though. And oh, against the bar by David Graham. Finally, Richardson's header falls into the arms of Freestone. Torquay then had a couple of glaring opportunities to open their account. Well, David Brown, just seven minutes into his debut, probably won't get a better chance than that. Lee Russell then with the free kick. Green towards Richardson. Did well to get head on it. Now Brown played wide for Hockley. Evans going with him. And the corner is given. David Graham then with the corner. Aim towards the far post. Kevin Hill was coming in. It was flicked away by Sharp. Now Reese turning it back in. And it's turned in by Marcus Richardson. Torquay, a goal to the good. After just nine minutes. And it's Marcus Richardson who's got it. It all stemmed from that rather half-hearted clearance. Picked up on the far side by Jason Reese. Good cross in. Richardson header. Just a little bit too much power on it for Freestone to prevent it from finishing up in the back of the net. Tyson with a little flick on. Woods getting it away well. Now Hockley. On the line for Brown. Keep it in play. Hockley making a little run into the box. This is Jason Reese curled in towards Richardson again. Well, he got in front of Jason Smith. Didn't quite direct the header on target, but that's another good effort from Marcus Richardson. Now Jason Reese forward for Brown. Reese again. Now Hill down the line. Marcus Richardson. Sharp going with him. Richardson just keeping it in play. Now playing it all the way back for Jason Reese. Difficult ball for him. Did well to get it forward. Canaville in towards Hockley. Oh, so close from Matt Hockley. Another fine move from Torquay United. Now Hill. Will chip in towards Hockley who made a run into the middle. Spotted it just in time. Now Tyson on the break. Go all the way here, Nathan Tyson. Looking to get past Stephen Woods. He's created the position for the shot. Just a little chip from him. Wide of the far post, but... Nathan Tyson then, with a little bit of direct running, just causing a few problems for the Torquay defence. He's getting up well for the header. Very by Lacey. Jameson. Very assured, the teenager. This is Nathan Tyson. Okay, going all the way with him. Tyson getting the cross in, but he was being pulled back. Jonathan Coates takes the free kick towards the far post. Jason Smith coming in. Good save from Dearden. Still the danger not cleared. Will be now. Smith putting it over the bar eventually, but he must have thought that he'd got the equaliser then with the header. 
Good free kick from Jonathan Coates and Smith meeting it well. Downward header. A very, very good save from Kevin Dean. This is Lee Russell. That's a casual ball. By Lacey. Chance here for Nathan Tyson perhaps to get the shot away. Oh, it's taking a deflection just over the top. I think probably no one will be more relieved in the Torquay lineup than Lee Russell. Gave the ball away to Lacey. He was able to make the initial run and then Tyson's shot deflected by Steve Woods. Nothing that did and could have done about it. Fortunately for him, went over the top. As as he to make a second substitution. John Williams is going to be the man to come on. Jason Smith is going off, so... Swansea throwing on an attacker and taking off a defender. Jason Reese finding David Graham. Straight into the arms of Freestone. First touch for Williams. Down the line for Coates. The attempted cross was blocked by Steve Woods. Stephen Evans back for Kuzak. Coates inside for John Williams. A little bit of space in the box already for Williams. Well, he's only been on the pitch about 45 seconds. I've well, got a goal then. Bound towards Sadibi. Williams up with a little touch on. Stephen Evans coming up on the overlap on the far side. Looking to get the cross in early towards Sadibi. Oh, good goal. A oh, real pace and method in that attack. And a fine finish, too. Well, it was the debutante Stephen Evans who created it with that overlapping run down the far touch line. A precision cross. And Mahmoud Sadibi doing the rest. Tyson. Just too far in front of him. Reese has played it short, straight to Coates. Inside for Lacey. Just fell behind Coates then. They are living dangerously. Williams with the header in towards Sadibi. Chance for him to get the shot in. That's two. Frenchman doubles his tally for the season. Well, it always looked on the cards, to be honest. There's a certain nervousness about the way Torquay are defending at the moment. This Jason Rees giving the ball away in the first place. Little knockdown eventually from John Williams. Should he be able to turn and plant it past Kevin Dearden? Well, I think you can always look at it. That, that goals change games, and without doubt, when they equalise, our, our head started to drop. And, and, and we, you know, we were a little bit negative after that. I thought we, we, we accepted that, all right, then we've got a point, we'll settle for a point. And they went on and, and uh, won the game. Where probably we did lose, it was maybe our strength in midfield. We, we lost the midfield in the second half. We didn't get the ball, we didn't win the ball, and we didn't create many chances from there. So, a big disappointment for Torquay. Time now. How things are going? Um, I wish it was better. I wish we had more points. I wish we were higher up the league. But it, the, if you do look at the league table, there's, there's quite a few teams locked together. And, and probably if you go down from maybe seventh or eighth position to the bottom, it's, it's very close and very tight, which is really letting you know that the, the division is, is reasonably average in that sense. It is tight. And looking at that uh, league table there, uh, Roy, uh, Exeter City provide the next opposition. And you can see just how important that game is for you on Tuesday night at Playmore. Well, it, it's a massive game for us. You know, we've just lost two home games on the trot, and what we don't want to do is make that a hat-trick. But it's a big game. The fact it's a local derby, uh, without doubt, our supporters will be expecting more from us, and we need to give a little bit more. And looking back at the season as a whole, you've had highs and lows. We'll, we'll look at both. But I suppose that big defeat at Luton uh, taught you quite a lot about the, the squad you'd inherited. It taught us that we were not good enough, uh, certainly than them. Their, their finishing was excellent. Um, I think you'll see one of the goals. Yeah, these Good. are three of the five. We won't subject you to all five, Roy. 
it, Kevin, was a, it was a day where you learnt a lot there, wasn't it? It was, yes. I mean, Kevin Deedon's had a tremendous start with us and he's done very well. He's been very solid in goal and that day they stuck five goals past him and, and to be fair, I don't think he had much chance with any of them. How far are you through your rebuilding process? We've just started. We, I've had to change it and we've brought one or two players in. Without doubt, I think there needs to be one or two more players before I'm happy with the team and, and what we need to do at the moment is, is just keep things ticking over. One of the best nights of the season was that Worthington Cup tie at Spurs, a game I saw. and I was very impressed with the way your lads really rose to the occasion to show what they could do. And lucky not to score the first goal, weren't you, that night? Yeah, I mean, that, that was Woosley. Again, centre-half. Had that gone in again, goals, they changed games. But we played well on the night. We, we, we did ourselves proud. Yeah, it was a fantastic Tremendous. night. Despite the 2-0 the defeat, that was the, the goal from Les Ferdinand. It was, a, it was a good night. must give you hope for the future. Yeah, the difference in the game, I too, is when Sheringham came on. We, we, we were doing quite well till he came on. But no, we were pleased with, with the way we played that evening. And, uh, you know, it, it's, that, like you say, the highs and the lows. We're not consistent mm. enough at the moment. As a manager, Roy, how much have you learned and how much did you pick up from playing under Brian Clough at uh, Derby County, those glory years of the, of the 70s with uh, Brian Clough? Well, I had six years with him, and you don't work with somebody for six years and not pick something up. And, uh, you know, he was, a, he was a great manager and really should have got the England job. Um, that, was, that was probably one of the sad points of his career, that he never managed England. But a great motivator, good on the training ground. The best thing that we felt as players, and we still have get-togethers now and again, was that whenever we went on the football field, you know, we felt ready for the match. We felt, we felt as if, you know, we were fit and we were strong and, uh, and we couldn't wait for the next game. What was his biggest strength as a manager, though? Because uh, some would say he was very idiosyncratic. Uh, sometimes he was there, sometimes he wasn't. But he was just a great motivator, wasn't he? No, the major thing, he, to he told you straight. There was no frills. There was no uh, cotton wool wrapped around it. He told you what you were doing wrong and, uh, and, and he'd also tell you what you were doing in a sense, well for the team. And like I said, he was very honest. People say that they were fearful of him. Um, at the time I was there, none of the players were really fearful of him. Maybe worried about getting a telling off now and again, but overall he was, he was straight in your face and he'd tell you what he thought. And he was one of the big reasons, presumably, why you went on to have a successful spell. Uh, 28 caps, wasn't it, for uh, England? And you played alongside two of the greatest centre-halves with Dave Mackay at Derby, and for England, uh, Bobby Moore, you must have been very proud to represent your country. Yeah, I mean, Dave Mackay is the best player I ever played with. Mm. Great player. Um, and Bobby great Moore? Score. Bobby, great player. I was, I was fortunate, in a sense, to play with Bobby. When I first came into the England team, Gordon Banks was in goal, Bobby Moore. I played alongside Bobby Moore, Martin Peters and Alan Ball in midfield, and Jeff Hurst up front. You know, they'd won the World Cup, so it was a great experience for me. What was this game, Roy? I think this was against, I think it was Russia. Great header from you there. Lucky not to get your one uh, England goal. I didn't get a goal. Uh, I made one or two, but didn't get a goal. But quite slim on that as well. <laughs> Must have been a great experience, uh, even though England were going through a pretty much a sort of transitional stage, weren't they? Yes, then it, there obviously needed to be changes. The one thing about Alf, Alf Ramsey, who was manager, he was very loyal to his players, probably, probably maybe too loyal to his players at the end of the day. But Alf, again, was a great manager. I think we won the game 2-1. Well. I think that was an own goal at the finish. Yeah, that was it. 2-1 in Russia, a friendly there, and uh, you didn't manage to get on the score sheet, but you've certainly built up plenty of uh, great memories over the years for England and for Derby. You got a few goals for them over the years, didn't you? Yeah, I got a few goals for Derby. I mean, that, the best thing about winning uh, the Football League at that time was the fact that we also, we also played in Europe. I think that was the, the Watney Cup as it was then. Dave Mackay hit the free kick, I followed it through. The trusty left foot, that was against Manchester United. I think that was a sign of times to come. We played them in the Watney Cup and we, mm. we hammered them 4-0 pre-season. So here you are at uh, Torquay with a local derby to look forward to on Tuesday night. Not the greatest experience of local derbies so far because you, you played Argyle and uh, you lost earlier in the season, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think Plymouth are a good team. And I thought on the day probably we deserved a point. We, had a, we played very, very well, certainly first half. And it was a good goal. They're, they're, they're doing well. Um, I think the boy Evans is a real handful up front. And they play football and play some good football. Um, I, like I say, though, I still felt that probably on the day we probably deserved, we deserved a point. Yeah. Any changes in mind for Tuesday night for the, uh, the game against Exeter? 
I think there may be one forced on us anyway because David Graham looks as if his, uh, his ankle, he's got a nasty whack on his ankle, so he's certainly out at the moment. Um, but we'll, we'll have a look and see how the players are. OK, Roy, thanks very much for the moment. Well, as Look we... at play more against Northampton Town. Marco Gabbiadini ran the show for the Cobblers. His two first-half goals put the second division side in the driving seat. Kevin Hill did pull one back for Torquay with eight minutes to go, but it was all too little, too late. Tiverton Town are also... Our... Tonight, after an excellent 1-0 victory at South End, Steve Adams getting the all-important goal. Here at Plainmore, the honours went the way of Exeter City, who beat Torquay United by two goals to nil. Sean McCarthy was the Exeter hero, grabbing both their goals, the first coming just two minutes into the second half. McCarthy, who's made a habit of scoring in derby games, then made it 2-0 with a splendid individual effort. To complete a miserable night for Torquay, they then had Gary Brabin sent off for the second time in his short Plainmore career. Not a happy night for the girls then, but Exeter City and Plymouth Argyle with plenty to smile about. Martin Dean at Plainmore for West Country News. Hmm. Not a bad cross. Middleton! Dearden didn't move! Well, the ball was played across, came out to Craig Middleton, but I think it took a deflection on its way in. Woodward. Oh, there's Fitzpatrick, and he's got some space. Has he got the finish? Sadly for Torquay, he has. Halifax in the driving seat. The Yorkshiremen go 2-0 up. Cockley. Sends it deep. There's Hill. Takes a deflection. Woods is in there. Benefield is. Richardson, they're queuing up. But it still won't go in. So, disappointment for Torquay. Joy for Plymouth Argyle. We're going to test this door fresh enough in the memory to set alarm bells ringing at Playmore after a run of five straight defeats. It's seen them slide down towards the trapdoor again, so a win over fellow strugglers Macclesfield was vital to restore confidence on and off the field. There to see if they could do it, Martin Dean. Well, much discussion over the last few days about the future of third division football clubs as the league considers possible restructuring. But despite the uncertainty, Chairman Mike Bateson has sanctioned two more additions to the changing face of Torquay United. Gregory Goodridge returns to Plainmore after spells at Queen's Park Rangers and Bristol City. And Jason Fowler makes his debut after joining the club from Cardiff City yesterday. Well, they're pitched into what's certain to be a very important battle between two sides who are far too close to the bottom of the table for comfort. History, though, on Torquay United's side. Macclesfield have been beaten on each of their three previous visits to Plainmore. Put it in towards Steve Woods. Jason Reese looking to knock it back in there. Click on from Appian Williams. David Graham with the early chance. Oh, he's hit the post. And that could have been so close. This is Fowler. Now Graham again. And Torquay could and should have taken the lead in the opening minute. Well, David Graham was clean through then. He beat the goalkeeper comfortably enough, but somehow managed to hit the upright. And the ball, frustratingly for him and for Torquay United, bouncing away to safety. What a start that could have been, though. away by Christian Hansen. This is Danny Adams. He's got away from Goodridge. Now Glover looking for space to turn. A little chip. It seemed that Kevin Dearden was off his line. Didn't quite get it right though. Glover with a little touch off for Priest. Cut out by Gregory Goodridge. Now Reese finding Fowler. Goodridge. David Graham. And short for Fowler. Inside for Goodridge. Fowler will get the return ball. Nicely played into the path of Effie and Williams. And somehow Steve Wilson doing just enough. Well, that looked for a moment as if it might have crept under Wilson's body then. And somehow the ball just staying out of the net. Good move though. In the new, two newcomers, Goodrich and Fowler, combining well. Fowler with a through ball. Williams is shot blocked. Hitch in with the free kick. 
Here with the header away. And Danny Adams trying towards Jeff Smith, who just got in behind the defence there. Cross in, and that's the first of the afternoon from Ricky Lambert. Well, Lambert, who got a hat-trick against Luton last Saturday, carrying on in that rich scoring vein. And it was all set up by Jeff Smith, who just got in behind the Torquay defence. Left in the clear, good cross towards the far post. And Lambert coming in with the simplest of tap-ins. Bobby Graham just losing his footing. Vincent's clearance. Clever finding Jeff Smith. Poor ball, though, picked up by Fowler. Now Goodridge. He's got away from Priest. Looking to play it through for Kevin Hill. Oh, what a finish. Kevin Hill's second goal of the season. And it was perfectly set up for him by the new boy, Greg Goodridge. Uh, Goodridge playing a precision pass into the box. Hill taking it in his stride and then fairly burying it in the bottom corner. And Torquay back on level terms. And in long towards David Graham, almost coming for Effie and Williams. And the ball eventually out for a goal kick, according to Mr. Harris. with the header forward. Oh, a little bit of hesitation in that Torquay defence, and that's allowed David Graham to get onto the ball. Can he turn this one away? He's got Ram Wilson. Oh, dear, just couldn't bring it back. Oh, Kevin Hill was waiting to pounce then after David Graham appeared to have done all the hard work. He just couldn't quite pull the ball back from that angle. Down for Hitchin. Jacob, Jacob, Jacob. Clean again. Finding a bit of space Just in front of that penalty area. Clever was brought down. Yeah, in a dangerous position, this. Yeah, clean over the ball. Look, it may be Ricky Lambert who will take the free kick, though. Going for the big blast. He got it through, too. Straight at Kevin Deard, unfortunately for him. Fowler. Went straight to Tinson. Fowler in again, good challenge. This is Hitchin. On the line for Monroe. Looking to get the ball in first time. Oh, and a good effort from Lambert, and it's gone in again. Well, he had to come back to retrieve the ball, Ricky Lambert. He managed to get some leverage on the shot. It bounced awkwardly and did and couldn't keep it out. Hankin with the free kick then. And towards David Graham. Goodridge getting the shot in. Oh, he came from nowhere then, Greg Goodridge. And he could so easily have got the equaliser. The thing about the game, we can take something out of it, the fact that we had a very, very good first half. Um, and over the 90 minutes, I think probably our best two players were Jason Fowler and, and Greg Goodridge. I thought they gave us a little bit, as, as I hoped they would do, and they gave it to us. Um, our football was better, certainly, first half. And before they got their chance, we maybe should have been two goals up. You know, we've, we've hit the post in the, in the opening minutes of the game. Uh, Effin Williams has had a good chance where the goalkeeper's made a good save, but their good goal-scoring chances really were we should be tucking those chances away. And even when you know we've gone 2-1 down, they present us with a golden opportunity and the guy heads the ball back to Effin and miscontrols it and sadly the chance is gone. The lad just recovers back and kicks it away. So we've had our chances and, 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 and certainly our football was a lot, lot better. Exeter looking pretty good in 14th spot, just five points away from the playoff positions, but the comfort zone is getting smaller by the week for Torquay, just two points separating them now from bottom club Halifax. Tell us.
Well, a bit of a for fortunate ricochet to Dave Cameron. This is four. Brilliant save by Kevin Dearden. Talk United have lost six games on the trot coming into this game. But they're looking sprightly here, and that's Alex Russell, thunderbolt there, and... Well, he did exceptionally well, Alan Marriott, to tip that one over. Priest. Hansen's looping ball. Only half cleared. This is Goodridge. Might go all the way, Gregory Goodridge. It's through on goal, and he's missed the target with a toe poke. Well, Goodridge beat three men and almost got around Marriott. I think the distraction from the keeper thwarted him and into the side netting. Alex Russell takes over. This is David Graham. Might go all the way, David Graham. Well, he went all the way and then smashes it over. David Graham, the former Dunfermline striker, does the hard work. And then it seemed easier to score. Bimson. Cameron with the hold-up play. Gaines cross. Thorpe's header. Cam shot. Well, it hit the back of Hansen and flew over the bar. Cam shot looked destined for the top left-hand corner. Dearden was certainly flapping. Well, Argyle and Exeter highlights later, but Neil, it's a familiar story for Torquay again, isn't it? You helped them out a few seasons ago, and now Roy McFarland has a lot of work to do. Yeah, it was a marvellous time for me. It was a great place to live, and, and I'll never forget beating Carlisle the next the last game and being safe. But it looks like another battle, but I think that looked like a fighting battle yesterday. I thought they did ever so well yesterday. Had some chances. Gregory Goodridge looks a bit lively, you know, and I think Roy will be, take a lot of, you know, sort of pluses from that game, and because uh, it's not easy going up to Lincoln. So uh, hopefully, you know, uh, they'll, they'll stick it out and get some points. And nice to see them break that losing it streak, will. isn't it? Yeah. OK, we're going to take... ...half of the season for Torquay United with a dreadful run of form, seeing them slip to within three points of the foot of the table. But there were encouraging signs in a goalless draw at Lincoln last week. So could they build on that improved performance against Oxford at Playmore? Watching the game for us, Martin Dean. Well, it's another milestone for Torquay's assistant manager, David Priest. This will be his 550th league game. Although, of course, it's also his home debut following his surprise call-up into the United side at Lincoln last Saturday. At 38, he's twice the age of the other new face at Plainmore. Online striker Richard Logan also makes his home debut. The big question now, of course, is whether Torquay United can find some sort of consistency with their much-changed lineup. Christian Hansen getting forward. Graham playing it back for David Priest. Might charge his luck from there. Charged down by Quinn. Russell spreading it wide for Goodrich. Well, he crossed just deceiving McCaldon for a moment or two. Well, McCaldon at six foot five is one of the bigger goalkeepers in the league, but uh, he was almost chipped then. Hello with the corner. And again, the man who's rather disrupted there. Patton from corner kicks. McCaldon coming out and taking an easy catch. This is David Priest. Held in towards Logan. It'll drop for David Graham. And that's the opening goal. David Graham strikes for the sixth time this season. And really that is just reward for some good pressure from Torquay United. And it all stemmed from that ball in from David Priest. Not properly cleared. It fell nicely for David Graham. You had the space. To just tuck it into the corner. Now Logan. Cross in towards Graham. He's got a little thick on towards Goodridge. Can he bring it down? Oh, good finish. Oh, that's his first since rejoining Torquay United. And a reminder. To the fans who took him to the heart, their hearts in the first spell. What an exciting little player Gregory Goodrich can be. Little flick on from David Graham at the near post. Goodrich still had plenty to do though, controlled it well. 
And then picked his spot into the roof of the net. This is David Graham. Try and go all the way when he was brought down by Morley. Maybe Jason Fowler to curl it. Oh, just wide. Oh, Jason Fowler. And seeing his chances from that sort of distance. Plenty of curl on the ball, perhaps just a little too much in the end. Richardson's header goes straight to David Priest. Support is from Hansen. And now Russell. Priest hugging that touchline inside for Goodrich. A little bit of space on the edge of the area. Oh, into the side netting. He doesn't need much time or space, Gregory Goodrich. Just creating a yard or so on the edge of that penalty area. Hardly any backlift, but plenty of power in the shot. He's wanting to get on with things quickly. David Graham has found a bit of space on the edge of the area. Oh, brought down. Just as he was about to shoot then. Andy Crosby pulling his foot from under him. Haven't scored three goals in a league game this season. Jason Fowler, oh! They very nearly did then. So Oxford United get this second half underway. They've made one change. It's this man, Manny Omoyimmi, who's come on. He might have an early chance to score. Well, that has got to go down as one of the quickest goals, I would have thought, by a substitute. Certainly this season, and maybe for all time. How's that for a manager's decision playing off? Manny Omoyimni coming on at the start of this second half and scoring within seconds, bursting through the Torquay defence, which was quite literally, I think, caught cold on a bitter afternoon here at Plainwalk. Oh, we'll take the corner. Eden coming and getting a punch. And turned back in by Andy Crosby. Well, the skipper putting Oxford United back on terms with a sweetly placed volley. And it all stemmed from that Paul Powell corner. He didn't got to it, got hands to it. And it fell invitingly for Crosby. And he made no mistake at all with the volley. Fowler with the corner. It's Kevin Hill with the header. It's too far away. He substitute having an immediate impact. Not quite as he would have liked. The header in well, but just forcing it over the bar. David Graham. Managing to pick out one of his own players this time. Christian Hansen. Goal towards Graham on the far side. Got up well for the header. Logan! <laughs> and Richard Logan gets his first goal for Torquay United. And how important will that one be, I wonder? Well, it was Christian Hansen's cross towards the far post, but it was David.